In order to get perfect focus accuracy with a DSLR, you have to calibrate your lens. But why is that and how you do that? I'll show you in this video. Hey there, my name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria, and welcome to my backyard. I'm out here because I have to calibrate my 105 DC for Nikon F mount as it is not really accurate. But why is that? So mostly there are two reasons why a DSLR doesn't get the focus right. The first reason is that a DSLR actually uses two sensors, one image sensor and one autofocus sensor. Both of them are located in different places in the camera. The image sensor is of course in the back of the camera and the autofocus sensor is down below where the tripod mount actually is located. And because of that there can be small misalignments and depending on the lens you use this might show in the final image. Also even if your DSLR is perfectly correct and everything is super well adjusted there can be issues because Every lens has a different optical characteristic. And because of that, lenses have something like focus shift or they display focus in a different way that might confuse the autofocus sensor or the lenses themselves might have calibration issues right out of the box. So what are the prerequisites for calibrating a DSLR lens? For Nikon shooters, it is important that you mount a lens with CPU contacts. Actually, all Nikon autofocus lenses have CPU contacts and also some manual focus lenses. For example, Voigtlander manual focus lenses also have CPU contacts and can therefore also be calibrated. The following items are required in order to perform a calibration on your lens and DSLR. You need a calibration target. I myself use the Spider Lens Cal tool. Then you need a tripod to support the lens calibration tool. I use a light stand because the tool itself is very lightweight, so a light stand is enough. For my DSLR, I need another tripod. So I use my studio tripod, which is very sturdy and heavy, so that I don't introduce any camera shake that might compromise the result. And of course, last but not least, I need my lens and the camera body I want to calibrate. Keep in mind that you have to bring every camera body that you want to use the camera lens on because you have to calibrate each camera body with the corresponding lens separately as there are small variations from camera body to camera body. It is actually pretty straightforward how to set up everything for calibration. Make sure that the lens calibration target and the camera are both on the same level. I myself prefer to calibrate the lens to the working distance I'll intend using the lens the most. This is also what Nikon recommends in all their manuals calibrate the lens to the distance you most frequently shoot the lens with. Because lenses are optical instruments, they exhibit different characteristics and it is perfectly possible that the lens is accurately focusing at a distance of about two meters but is missing the focus if you shoot something at five or ten meters. The next step is to actually perform the calibration. Check out your camera's manual to see how to access the camera's calibration menu. On Nikon cameras it is called AF Fine Tune. Then set the camera to either aperture priority or, the, or manual mode. Set the lowest possible ISO. I also tend to set a self timer of two seconds on my cameras to avoid introducing camera shake from the tripod. Also make sure that the calibration target is steady. I once had the issue that wind was actually moving the calibration target and therefore rendering the results obsolete. So I've got all that ready. 
and now I'm going to take my first test shot at wide open aperture. So after the first test shot taken, I can already see that the lens is front focusing like crazy. By the way, I forgot to mention that earlier, always leave the camera in single autofocus for performing lens calibration, as continuous autofocus is absolutely not suitable for that. Now I'm accessing the menu for AF fine tune and I'm gonna add some corrections already. I've set the camera to plus 20 which is the maximum and now I'm gonna go back and see when the lens actually focuses perfectly. It is important to note that depth of field extends further behind the plane of critical focus than it does towards the camera. So when you're fine-tuning your camera lens, keep that in mind that the depth of field behind the plane of critical focus should be a little bit more than in front of it. That would be perfect. So now after about three tries, I think I got it right. Don't hesitate to repeat the process over and over again if in doubt. It is really important to get it right because only then you have confidence in your camera equipment when you're out shooting and trying to get the job done. Now after finishing the calibration process, I'm going to move the target around a little bit and take different shots at different distances just to see how well my calibration actually worked out. Let's do this. So you just saw that I adjusted the lens a little bit and that's because I want to make sure that the lens focuses best in distances between one meter and five meters because that's the distance where I actually want to use the lens the most. After calibrating your lens I recommend taking the opportunity to check your lens for focus shift. Focus shift appears in all lenses that exhibit spherical aberrations and actually every lens does that only to a different degree. But if you stop down the lens, the plane of critical focus or the plane of maximum perceived sharpness changes slightly. That means that you can get perfectly sharp images at f2 but at f2.8, f4 and so on the plane of focus might be somewhere else resulting in slightly unsharp images. In order to test for that just leave the lens calibration target out there and start shooting a series of test shots with closing down the aperture from the initial calibration aperture. Because there is the risk of focus shift when lens is being stopped down, I always recommend calibrating the lens at the aperture you intend to shoot with. That's very important. Always check your preferred working aperture for front and back focus issues. The second type of focus shift actually stems from focusing the lens at different distances. I previously checked that already, so how does the lens behave at different distances? Again, this is the reason why you have to calibrate your lens at the working distance and not at a different distance. Oh, and here is my free pro tip. Always bring a notebook. Write down what you found out about the behavior of the lens because believe me, after a few weeks, you won't remember it. And then you have to go through the whole process over and over again. And that's tedious. So, take notes. So how often should you calibrate your lenses? I recommend doing an initial calibration when you first purchase the lenses, so you can make sure that everything is in order 
and you can also learn how the lens behaves in terms of back and front focus when being stopped down. After this initial calibration there is usually no additional calibration required. I however recommend checking the lenses once a year just to make sure that everything is in order. And of course you can always recalibrate the lens if you choose a different working distance and working aperture than the one you calibrated the lens for. The time and effort you put into calibrating your lenses always pays off. Only if you can trust your equipment to perform reliably, you can really focus on what is most important in photography. And that's actually creating an interesting and exciting and creative image. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and following me on other social media. See you next time. <music>